and let's continue our study of the winter appearance of some common hardwood trees found in the Ohio Valley and Lower Great Lakes and Appalachian areas. This is a common tree, the tulip poplar. I did a segment on the leaves, the flowers, and the bark. Actually, that was one of the first segments I posted on this channel back in May or June, I believe it was. And uh, let's continue on with this. Didn't do much with the fall foliage. We had a drought in September and October and the trees did not get a good fall color like they usually do. These trees uh, require a moist soil to thrive and the soil dried out and their leaves wilted and fell to the ground without any, uh, any colorful uh, appearance. So that'll have to wait for another growing season. We've got our fairly deeply furrowed bark uh, shared by many of the oaks and ashes and the chestnut oak I did a segment on a few weeks ago has furrowed bark, deeply furrowed, even more deeply furrowed than this tulip poplar. And because this requires a moist soil and the chestnut oak almost exclusively grows in drier, more acid soils, you probably wouldn't find the two grow next to each other. Perhaps close to each other if the habitat changes quickly. But here we are looking up the winter appearance of this Tulip poplar tree, the bark is illuminated by this blue sky and late early winter sun. And if I can get a good clear view of the fruits of this tree, as you walk around in the woods, you will see these trees with furrowed bark, but most of the trees with furrowed bark do not get fruits or seed pods that stick around for months at a time and these stay on the trees well through the winter they are dispersed by wind and snow and ice and they do come down but these have already been exposed to several snowstorms and quite a bit of wind this fall and early winter and they're still hanging around in great bunches on the top of this tree and this is a big tree they get quite large 100 120 feet is not uncommon but as you're walking along and you see a tree with furrowed bark with lots of seed pods left Pretty good chance it's a uh, tulip poplar tree and not one of the other trees that it could be confused with. And they do grow straight. They like to grow straight, but as this tree reached its greater heights, probably the effects of windstorms and snowstorms and ice storms contorted its branches. But if you find them in a deep cove, they will grow straight for almost their entire height. The seed pods themselves often fall to the ground and they look kind of like the flowers do in the spring. They're about two inches to three inches long and maybe an inch and a half wide on a, about an inch long stalk there or stem. And this is what the flower becomes. I said spring, they pretty much bloom in June, so that would be more summer blooming. And because the foliage is already out when the uh, flowers form, you can't often see them unless you find a tree that's growing lower to the ground, which they usually don't. But these seed pods easily break apart. And the little seeds, let's see if we can get this to happen here fall to the ground like a little helicopter. The maple seeds do the same thing. They're going a little too fast to see, but as the wind and weather break these seed pods apart, the forest floor is littered with these, lead, these uh, seed pods. Many of them need uh, full sun to germinate and take over, so they're often, even though this is a mature woods here, we won't find too many tulip poplar seedlings growing in this beech maple forest. But out in the open areas around here, I find them taking over old fields um, by the thousands. So this is not necessarily a tree that requires a mature woods. It grows in these mature woods, but it also can be a pioneer species and often is in areas that have been recently logged. So here is our tulip poplar tree with its winter appearance.